Okay, let's get right into it today. So you wanna grab a sweatshirt that is darker in color. And you also wanna grab some elastics. And then when you wanna lay your sweatshirt down, you're going to twist it into a little cinnamon bun ball. So you just keep twisting and twisting and twisting until you get a nice little tucked cinnamon bun ball here. And then you wanna grab your elastics and you're gonna put four elastics onto the little cinnamon bun ball making eight pie cuts, so to speak. So you wanna grab your elastics, put them on, and you wanna end up with eight little different sections of uh, pie. And you also wanna make sure here that you're pulling out the sleeve because we want the bleach to also fall onto the sleeves. If the sleeves are tucked inside the little cinnamon bun here too tightly, then you won't be able to get any bleach on them and they'll just stay this navy color. So you wanna make sure that you go and look for where the sleeves are and pull them out into one of the little sections so that you can make sure that you get dye on them. And then when you're done, you should end up with something that looks like this, a nice little packed cinnamon bun. And there's eight separate sections that we're going to fill half with bleach. So the next step is to grab your bleach. So you want half a cup of bleach, then you wanna grab half a cup of water, and then you wanna grab a turkey baster or a squeeze bottle. I just grabbed this turkey baster and some rubber gloves to protect your hands. Now, if you don't wear glasses, you wanna make sure that you have eye protection as well. So then you wanna put on your rubber gloves to protect your hands. And then we're gonna start mixing up the bleach and the water. So grab the water, pour it into the bleach and mix it up with your turkey baster. is to cover your surface beside your sink or beside your tub with some plastic. And you wanna make sure that there's no holes between the sink and the plastic. And then you wanna grab your water and bleach mixture and your turkey baster and your little cinnamon bun roll. Make sure that you have your gloves on and then you're gonna grab the little cinnamon bun roll as I've been referring it to and you're gonna put it over the sink. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour bleach on every second little pie uh, slice here. So every second pie slice is where you get bleach. And then you're gonna grab some of your bleach mixture. So be careful not to get any of the bleach on your skin because it is a known irritant. And yeah, start to fill every second pie slice with the bleach mixture. Now you wanna put on quite a good amount um, because you want to have a good effect with the bleach. And the only way to do that is make sure that you saturate those uh, different pie sections. And you can already see the first section that I've done here is already starting to transform. So this is my favorite part of the whole process because you can really see the colors changing. And if you selected a dark sweatshirt, either a black sweatshirt or a navy blue sweatshirt like I've got here, uh, the color ends up being a surprise and it's often pretty cool. So I love this kind of rusty red that it's turning here. But yeah, you just want to go through and make sure that you have put bleach on every second little slice and then you want to flip it over and you want to do the same thing. And I always start on the little area that has the sleeve in it because again, you don't want to miss the sleeve. I think it's cool when you're wearing it to be able to look down and see the bleach come through on the sleeve. So. Yeah, and then once it's all saturated on both sides, make sure that there aren't any areas that you want to go back with it a little more. So here I see a couple more areas. I'm just gonna add a little bit more bleach here and there. 
And then once I'm good with it, I am going to place it to the side and let it, let the colors kind of come through. Now you only need to leave it for about 10 minutes. And once you've got it at the stage you like it, that's when we're gonna wash it. And of course you wanna wash your hands once you're done handling the bleach at all. Uh, make sure you wash the gloves so that you can reuse them. And yeah, so it's been about 10 minutes here and I'm really happy with how it's looking. So at this stage, I'm gonna take off the elastics and kind of see what I did, see what I got here. And if there's any areas when I unfold it that I wanna add more bleach, this is the time that I'm gonna do that. So again, it's only been 10 minutes or so. You don't wanna leave it too long because it will really eat through the clothes. And just unravel everything. So you can check out the front and then you can also check out the back and see kind of how it went. Now you can see that there's still so much of the navy sweatshirt showing through here and I did put lots of bleach on here. So don't be scared to really saturate it with the bleach. And then I just noticed that on the front here, there's kind of a large area with no bleach. So I'm just gonna take a bit of the bleach that I have left over and kind of do it by hand and spot add a little bit more bleach in an area that I feel like could use a little more. Next, what you want to do is grab it with your gloves, of course, and throw it in the washing machine. I just did a half hour cycle here to wash it out and I did add in some liquid detergent as well. And then you're going to pop it into the dryer. It's often fun to look at it when you pull it out of the washing machine and just see how it's coming along. And when you're done, you have an awesome sweater it has a really cool pattern on it i love the mix of color and i'm really excited to kind of take this one step further and add my own design on it with some paint so the next step is to come up with a design that you want to paint on your shirt i come up with this skull and bird flying through about rebirth and i also have a couple butterflies here and there that i'm going to use and what I did was I drew it first on tracing paper and then I'm putting a thicker paper underneath to uh, trace it onto. And what I'm gonna do is create a stencil for myself to work within, to transfer it onto the shirt accurately. So I have put this thicker paper underneath my drawing that's on the tracing paper and I'm gonna slide underneath uh, carbon transfer paper and I'm gonna get going. So I like to use a different color colored pencil uh, than I drew the drawing on so that I can see where I've traced and where I haven't traced. But the idea here is to just trace the outline around the image because you're going to be creating a stencil. Now I also drew the eyes and the nose on this one, but you don't have to do that. You really just need the outline. And then you also want to cut out any areas that aren't going to be on. So like the inside of the mouth, you can see that I transferred those details onto. And then I'm going to cut out this stencil with scissors here and I'm going to cut out the outside with scissors and then the inside I'm going to use a little a knife to cut that out because it's quite hard to do with the scissors. Now when you're cutting, remember that this should be pretty accurate because this is going to be your stencil to transfer your drawing on. So you want to be as accurate as possible when you do this. And then for this middle part here, I use this knife because it was a bit easier to get the details than using the scissors.
Okay, now you wanna place your stencil onto your shirt in the area that you want it. And I'm using this white paint marker here, and I'm just going all the way around the stencil lightly with this marker so that I can see where exactly uh, this image goes. And next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it in with paint. So I just wanna make sure that I have the stencil drawn on properly so that I can prime all of this area of my new canvas here. And I'm gonna grab a piece of foam core and put it inside the shirt next. And that's so no paint will seep through to the other side. And also it helps to support my painting with a nice hard painting surface. So I'm just gonna make sure that that is everywhere that I'm gonna be painting inside the shirt and that I smooth the shirt out on top of it. Next, I'm gonna grab some fabric medium. So this is textile medium by Delta. Then I'm gonna grab some white titanium white artist loft paint. And lastly, I'm gonna grab these little jars from the dollar store. These jars are really awesome to mix the paint in because you don't have to finish all in one day. If you're gonna work on a long scale project that's gonna take you a while, it's nice to mix your paint and your fabric medium together in these little jars so that you can come back to it later on and you don't have to stress about getting it all done at once. And you just wanna follow the directions on the fabric medium. So sometimes it's two parts paint, one part fabric medium, and sometimes it's reversed, and then you wanna mix it all together. And then you guessed it, you're gonna fill in this outline area fully with the white paint. Now be careful to leave the areas that aren't going to be painted blank, so the inside of the mouth will not be painted, so we wanna make sure that we're mindful to leave that blank. But yeah, you wanna just fill it in completely with this white, and it's gonna act as your base coat. So it'll make it a lot easier to paint on top of than it is to paint on top of this fabric. And this here is honestly the hardest part. So once you get past this part, you are smooth sailing. So you also wanna do two coats of this because you want it to be nice and opaque and that is gonna take the next colors you put on top of it and make them nice and bright. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our original drawing on the tracing paper and we're gonna place it over the primed area. Just make sure it's dry first. And then we're gonna grab our carbon transfer paper and we're gonna transfer back on some of the details that we are going to fill in with the paint. So here I'm gonna trace in all the details on the skull, the nose, the eyes, the little tooth, grooves and everything, just that will give me a good guide to follow with my paint. And one tip is to push really hard here because it does transfer pretty lightly, but it still provides a good guide. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill in my other little dram jars with the other colors that I wanna use and mix all my fabric medium together. So I'm gonna mix one of each of the colors that I'm gonna use and pre-mix it so that it is ready to go and I can come back and forth and not have to worry about it drying up on my palette. And I just fill the jars and then I shake them, give them the old shake, shake, shake until they are thoroughly mixed. And then you're ready to paint. So you can just go ahead from this stage on and use your mixed fabric medium and acrylic paint and just fill in the image. Just paint it like you would normally paint on a canvas, allow for layers to dry, and you can layer the paint on top of each other once it's dry, just like a, a real acrylic painting.
show you that I'm going to add some butterflies to this piece. And I just want to show you my process. It's very similar to my process of adding the skull. But for these, I want them to be in very specific places, like this butterfly on the arm. So what I suggest doing is trying on the clothing and then using some tape and actually taping the stencils in place while you're wearing it. This will get it to be more accurate in the position that you want instead of if you were to kind of eyeball it without wearing it. I find that sometimes if you just eyeball it when you try it back on again, the stitching is kind of crooked sometimes and then your image, especially if you've already painted it, is all crooked and it can be really disappointing. So now I always try on the piece of clothing that I'm working on and then I know that I've placed the stencils accurately. And then I cut out, same process, cut out little stencils for the butterflies and I'm going to use the same marker technique to draw them on. So I'm just going to place them accurately underneath the tracing paper and then I'm going to lift up the tracing paper and draw them on with the same white marker. And then you guessed it, the final step is to fill it in with the white fabric medium as a primer. Again, I like to do two coats because it just makes the colors that you put on top of it that much more vibrant. is to use a fan while you're waiting for the paint to dry because it really does help it go a lot faster. Okay so next I'm going to show you how I heat set the design. So what I do is I take a piece of parchment paper and I put it in between the sweatshirt so that nothing you know heats through to the other side and then what I do is I take another piece of parchment paper and put it on top of the design that I want to heat set and then I take the iron which I have on a cotton setting and I put it over the design on top of the parchment paper and I heat it through. Now I heat it for roughly 20 seconds and then I pull it away and you can see it kind of smoke a little bit. One thing that I wanted to note here is that you probably shouldn't be breathing in these fumes here so make sure that you have a fan going just for health and safety purposes. But you can see that it really softens up the fabric medium and the acrylic paint mixed together on there and it starts to get nice and pliable and it's really really awesome. This is also one of my favorite parts about doing this. And then you just want to do the same process for any part that you've painted. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do this technique, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you guys create.